Welcome to the Information Technology Management Pre-Qualifier course. Before we get into the subject matter of the course itself, I wanted to lay out some ideas on how learning actually works. Now these are not just some thoughts that I'm making up, these are based on research findings. So let's take a look at the traditional view of learning. The traditional view of learning, you have an instructor. The instructor is transferring knowledge to a student. So it's almost as if the instructor by virtue of his or her efforts is transferring knowledge into the student's brain okay and the uh, view actually indicates the big role that the instructor has to play in the whole process and the small role that the student plays in the process relatively okay so that's why the box for the instructor is very big the reality of learning though is pretty different in the reality of learning you've got a lot of inputs that the student gets one is instructional inputs and the student has had a lot of prior experiences and prior knowledge and students have certain attitudes towards learning and so many other factors. All of them play a role in how students assimilate what they're learning. So uh, the icon that I have used here is that of a drum. So you've got all of these things coming in together, getting churned up and resulting in the students learning. Okay, so very little of how much a student assimilates is actually under the control of the instructor okay so the whole idea is that knowledge is constructed by the student okay so there's a general saying in a field of education that says knowledge is constructed it's not received right so in the sense that it's not as if the instructor is giving knowledge to the student the instructor is presenting some inputs that input combines with a lot of other things that the student has already got from prior experience and their attitudes and everything and the student is constructing knowledge for herself or himself that's very important to understand so here are some general statements about the process of education how learning occurs so first point we've already looked knowledge is constructed not received okay so the student is constructing the knowledge it's not as if the instructor is giving student the knowledge right so uh, in a big sense this is a shift from the uh, traditional conception of knowledge to what is now understood traditional conception of learning to what is now understood right so it is the student who plays a much bigger role in the process the instructor actually has uh, a much smaller role to play although very important but a smaller role okay so the truth of the matter is only you can teach yourself of course, this is something that all of us have appreciated and at an intuitive level uh, for a long time, uh, but I think it's worth making this explicit. Okay, so learning actually involves rewiring of the brain. This is in terms of uh, the neural aspects of learning. It actually involves rewiring of the brain and it cannot happen without effort and strain, right? Because the brain by its very nature does not want surprises. The brain doesn't want to be disturbed. The brain doesn't want the status quo uh, to be changed in any way. It doesn't want the uh, possessor of the brain to be threatened in any way. So the brain likes constancy. Uh, the brain likes to shield you from uncertainty. And whenever you're trying to learn something new, that state of affairs is threatened. And it is actually the job of the brain to protect you from all of these things, right? So learning is actually a process in which you are struggling against your own brain. In fact, it's the brain that's learning and that same brain is struggling against the whole process, right? So that is why learning is difficult. It involves effort and strain and nobody can do anything about it, okay? So if your brain doesn't hurt, then I'm not doing something right. I in the sense that instructor, right? So if you're learning something, you're attending a course and if you find that everything is easy, then it's very clear that what you're learning has no value at all, right? If you're learning something that is valuable, that is different, that makes a significant change in your understanding of the, how things work, that process has to be difficult, that process has to be strenuous, and that process is controlled primarily by you because nobody else understands what is involved in you learning something. It's a unique pro product of your own environment of your prior knowledge, understanding and other things that nobody else has any idea about, okay? So it's very much driven by what you do, right? 
if it were not hard why would it have any value right so when you embark on learning something you must expect that it is hard you must expect to be frustrated at some points you must expect that nobody is able to help you only you can help yourself at certain points of course instructors do have a, a big role to play in assisting the whole process but the onus is not on the instructor the onus is on you to learn you have to take charge of your learning okay again another idea that i put forth generally is when you're climbing a mountain the process is obviously very hard right but we hope that the view from the top is well worth the effort that you're making right again the corollary in education is you're trying to learn something useful you're trying to learn something that uh, will be beneficial to you that's good for you to understand of course the process is going to be difficult but once you have grasped it it is something that will last you for a lifetime not only that it will make it easier and easier for you to learn new things because new learning builds upon what you already know and what you have already understood and assimilated right so this is something that keeps on giving whatever little you understand you have done with a lot of confidence with a lot of depth that is going to pay back every single day of your life in terms of making it easy for you to learn other things so what are the things you can do to take charge of your learning first and foremost you must actively engage with the subject matter right that is when you're studying something pay full attention to what you're studying okay don't let other frustrations and other things interfere with your process of learning you have to actively engage with the subject matter which means whatever you're reading try to understand it don't just try to memorize something you know uh, just rote memorization is generally not very useful of course it has a role to play in certain things but you have to understand and in order for you to understand you have to engage with the subject matter uh, no great instructor no great teacher a superstar teacher nobody can do that for you you have to do it for yourself okay and another very important thing is be critically aware of what you know and more importantly what you don't know right if something is being taught if you don't understand it acknowledge that i am not understanding it acknowledge the fact and then make the effort again till you acknowledge the fact that you're not understanding something you've not built a path towards overcoming that barrier and actually understanding something right it's very easy to blame somebody for things you're not understanding say oh the instructor didn't explain it well uh, this is a bad example you can say a lot of th- you know a lot of things thousands of things to give an explanation as to why you're not understanding something okay all of these are just escapes from the actual fact of engaging with the subject matter acknowledging i still don't understand this and once you acknowledge that you have opened the path to actually understanding right so this awareness which is in the field of education is called metacognition is extremely important you have to know what you know and more importantly you have to know what you don't know you have to acknowledge it another very important thing is as you go through the course you'll see that i've got numerous assignments you'll see a lecture for about a lecture video for about 10 12 15 minutes following that there will be an assignment which will really test your understanding of what was covered in the lecture the assignments are not difficult but if you have paid attention to the subject matter then the assignments will be fine if you have not paid attention you're going to find that the assignments will drill your brain and if you really have to do it properly you will have to go back to the lecture uh, re- revisit the lecture listen to it in the context of the question that has been asked and then go back and answer the question correctly right so it's very important that you do the assignments it's very common among students to think that assignments are some kind of chore which are being done for satisfying the instructor you know nothing could be further from the truth because assignments are meant to reinforce whatever has been taught to you right because you may listen to a lecture you think you understand but what if you really don't understand how will you know whether you understood or not it's only by being challenged in the form of an assignment that you really get the opportunity to test out did i really understand it because the assignment is going to probe you from various directions and then you may suddenly realize oh i really didn't get it fully right so that's the role of assignments and the reason instructors force you to do assignments is because they want you to engage with the subject matter not because they get some devious pleasure by giving you work 
that's the furthest thing from the truth okay so assignments are the cornerstone the centerpiece of this course you can listen to the videos all you like but unless you do these assignments you will never know whether you have really understood what's going on or not so that's extremely important so uh, do the assignments and don't uh, look for uh, you know satisfying the instructor oh there's a deadline on the assignment do I need to submit it by the deadline or oh, I got one question wrong those are all extraneous things you have to use the assignments to make sure that you have understood the concept once you have understood the concept whether you got the question right or wrong doesn't matter right because as you'll see if you read the syllabus you'll see that all I'm looking for is for you to submit the assignment I don't care how many questions you got correct how many questions you got wrong in fact for every assignment you can do the assignment as many times as you want to the point where you get every question correct so my point is that I want you to engage with the subject matter, do the assignments and use the assignments as a vehicle to test whether you have really understood what's going on in the course. Right? So assignments are not a chore for, uh, you know, for you to satisfy the instructor. They play a very important role in learning. The assignments have been very carefully designed to be useful to you, not just to make you spend some time. As far as possible, discuss actively with your learning community. Ask and answer questions to all of that. Okay, so if you know people who are in the course, talk to them. Otherwise, uh, what I will do is I will set up a Microsoft Teams environment, and within that, you'll be able to discuss with your colleagues who are taking the course. So the role of the teacher from whatever I've said so far is evolving initially there was a thought that the teacher is the most important person who's transferring knowledge to the student the teacher is a superstar well that idea in the field of education is called sage on the stage right we looked upon the teacher as this sage person who's supremely intelligent who understands everything who knows everything and is just out there a fountain of knowledge transferring knowledge to the students today we know much better and we know that an instructor is simply a guide on the side not a sage on the stage an instructor is simply a guide and the role that a guide can play is limited there's only so much that a guide can do there's only so much an instructor can do the instructor can provide the right kind of learning material the instructor can uh, make the lectures as clear as possible focusing on the important concepts the instructor can design assignments which are carefully designed to reinforce whatever you're learning but ultimately if the student doesn't engage with all of this there's nothing that anybody else can do okay so think of me the instructor as the guide on the side who has already put in several hundred hours of work in preparing this course material based on a lot of prior experience in teaching this material right so all of the knowledge and experience that I've got the things that I have seen that students have trouble with the kind of misunderstandings that students have what is important all of that has been encapsulated in this course okay now the ball is in your court you have to now engage with the math, subject matter and learn okay and just as a matter of administrative things what do you need to submit in this course the only thing that will play a role in how whether you pass the course or fail the course is how you do on the final examination okay so your performance on the final examination is going to determine whether you pass or fail however I want to make sure that you submit all the assignments okay and how well you perform on each assignment doesn't matter I want you to engage with the subject matter carry out perform all the assignments submit all the assignments so for example out of the numerous assignments you have maybe you miss one or two that's okay but if you're missing 25% of the assignments then even if you do well on the final examination I want to say that you will not pass the course okay you may say well I've already demonstrated my understanding by doing the final exam well I understand all the concepts why should I not pass the reason I'm putting this restriction is because if I don't make the submission of assignments a requirement then the natural tendency for you as a busy person as a working person will be to put off the assignments and not do them and finally there will be a justification that says oh well you know 
I really don't need to submit the assignments because it's not required. And then what will happen is you will not know the subject matter, you'll go and fail the exam. I don't want that to happen. I want every one of you to pass the course. I don't want you failing the course and I don't want to see you again in my class the next time I teach the course. So it is for this and for you to get your money's worth that I'm saying that submission of assignments is a must. It's required. If you don't submit more than a certain number of assignments, I will fail to evaluate your final exam, however well you may have done. Okay? I'm, say, I'm putting this restriction because I've seen so many students who claim, oh, I know Excel, and then they come and fail this exam. I don't want that to happen. Okay? So with all of that, welcome to the course. Uh, as I have said, the course material has been very carefully designed, and I'm sure that if you work through it carefully, meticulously, you will learn a lot that is of value in your MBA studies as well as beyond. So welcome to the ITM pre-qualifier.